in this video i will provide two different proofs of no cloning theorem at the end of the video i will also discuss that what can be achieved if cloning is possible so stay tuned till the end of the video let's start with the theorem The no cloning theorem states that there is no unitary operator that can clone arbitrary qubits. In the statement of theorem, there are two keywords. Uh, number one is the unitary operator, and number second is arbitrary. Each unitary operator can be expressed in a circuit. So, uh, assume that our unitary operator that can clone qubits is UC. And it takes an input of arbitrary qubit cat psi and provide us two identical copies as output of the circuit. However, in a unitary circuit, the size of input must be same as the size of output. Therefore, our unitary circuit will take another input of, uh, of some qubit. Let's say that qubit is cat omega we can choose cat omega equals to any arbitrary qubit, uh, but for the simplicity of proofs, uh, I'm uh, using cat omega equals to zero. The same proof works if we use cat omega to be any arbitrary qubit. Mathematically, we can say that uh, our unitary operator is applied on uh, cat psi and cat omega and give us output of uh, two identical copies of cat psi. In the first proof, we will show that uh, because a uh, unitary operator that clones qubit is not linear, hence uh, it cannot exist. It is because uh, all unitary operators must be linear. If uh, uh, UC is a unitary operator, then we can apply uh, UC on the uh, 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 composite state of uh, A cat psi plus B cat phi. And the result will be same if we apply uh, UC on A UC cat psi plus B uh, UC cat psi. So let's start our first proof and show that uh, cloning operation is uh, not linear, hence cannot be unitary. So proof number one. Uh, let's say that uh, cat psi is, uh, is an arbitrary qubit which is equals to alpha cat zero plus beta cat one then uh, cat psi tensor product with zero will be equals to alpha uh, cat zero zero plus beta cat one zero and that is input to our circuit in the first proof we have to show that if we apply uc on uh, the whole of the input that is alpha cat zero zero plus beta cat 1 0 or if we apply uc uh, on alpha uc cat 0 0 plus 
बीटा यू सी कैट वन जीरो द आंसर विल बी सेम सो द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड द राइट हैंड साइड मस्ट प्रोड्यूस द सेम आंसर अदरवाइज आवर क्लोनिंग ऑपरेटर इज नॉट लीनियर सो लेट्स चेक इट आउट आई स्टार्ट विद द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड सो आई हैव यू सी एल्फा कैट जीरो जीरो प्लस बीटा कैट वन जीरो and the cloning will provide me two copies so i will have uh, alpha uh, cat 0 0 plus beta cat uh, 1 0 uh, tensor product with alpha cat 0 0 plus beta cat 1 0 i can write tensor product sign here or i can omit it uh, one is the same thing and if i simplify this expression i will get alpha square cat 0000 plus alpha beta cat uh, 0010 plus beta alpha cat uh, 1000 and plus beta square equals to uh, beta square times cat uh, uh, 0010 so that is my left hand side now let's see uh, what will be the right hand side the right hand side is uh, alpha uh, unity unity operator applied on uh, cat 00 plus beta unity unity operator times cat 10 so once again our cloning operator will clone qubits and we will get alpha cat 00 and other and another copy of cat 00 plus beta times two copies of cat 10 and if we simplify this expression we will get alpha cat 0000 plus beta cat 1010 and you can see that uh, left hand side is not same as right hand side so left hand side is not equals to right hand side therefore our unity operator is not linear hence cannot exist not linear linear hence not exists and our proof is finished so let me clear the board and then we will see the second proof that provide us additional information about cloning the second proof is based upon another property of unity, unity operators that is uh, unity operators preserve inner products of vectors so assume that i have a unity operator a and i apply that operator on two different vectors uh, cat x and cat y and my answer is equals to uh, cat m and cat n respectively then the inner product of um, vectors uh, x and y must be the same as inner product of the transform vectors Uh, m and n so this is before operation was applied and this is after operation was applied so let's start with the proof number 2 once again i have I assume that the unity operator U C that can clone qubits can be created, and then I will I will show that our assumption is wrong. So we are proving with the uh, with this is a proof by contradiction. So we apply a unity operator U C on two different inputs. We say U C on cat psi times cat zero, and my output is two copies of cat psi. i apply uc 
on cat5 and cat0 and my output is two copies of cat5 so if uh, a unity operators preserve a norm uh, inner product of the vectors then uh, inner product of the uh, left hand side must be the same as inner product of the right hand side so it implies that uh, bra psi and bra 0 times uh, cat phi and cat 0 must be same uh, as uh, bra uh, psi and bra psi times uh, cat phi and cat phi and if I simplify this we will get uh, inner product of uh, psi and phi get psi and get phi uh, times inner product of uh, 0 with 0 uh, is equals to uh, inner product of uh, get psi with get phi and once again inner product of get psi with get phi uh, we know that if, the, if we have the same unit vector then uh, its inner product is equals to 1 so uh, inner product of 0 uh, cat 0 with cat 0 will be equals to 1 so we, we have uh, inner product of cat uh, psi and cat phi on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have uh, inner uh, product of cat psi and cat phi scale the left hand side is equals to the right hand side uh, if and only if uh, the inner product of cat phi and cat psi is either equals to 1 or it is equals to 0 it is because uh, 1 is equals to 1 square and also 0 is equals to 0 square uh, uh, we know that the inner product of two vectors uh, which are unit vectors is equal to 0 if they are the same vectors so in this case uh, cat uh, psi will be same as cat phi so we can make a, a cloning machine that can only clone a same vector a specific vector uh, in the second case uh, when inner product is equal to 1 that means uh, cat psi is orthogonal to cat uh, phi so basically cat psi and cat phi are orthogonal to each other that means we can also create a cloning machine that can clone some specific vectors which are orthogonal to each other so maybe we can make a machine that can clone only two vectors and those vectors are cat plus and cat minus but we cannot make a cloning machine that can clone arbitrary vectors that's why arbitrary was the keyword we can only make cloning machine that can either clone a uh, same vector again and again or can clone only orthogonal vectors now at the end of the lecture let's discuss what we can achieve if we can make a cloning machine although the cl making cloning machine is impossible but assume that we are able to make cloning machine in some other universe what we can achieve in that universe we know that a qubit can hold a very large amount of data it is because a qubit cat psi is uh, composed of uh, two complex numbers uh, one is alpha and second is beta so maybe we can say alpha is equals to 0.0, .0 2, 1, 3, 7, 8, 9 and so on and so forth and basically alpha is a whole book uh, a whole novel of Shakespeare and then we find beta uh, so that the alpha and beta preserve the normalization constraint of qubit so we can store a whole novel or maybe all the novels of Shakespeare in a single qubit but uh, if we give that qubit to someone uh, maybe uh, this qubit Alice has this qubit and we transmit this qubit to Bob and we have Bob here and as soon as Bob measures this qubit uh, all the information uh, stored uh, all the novel stored in this qubit is lost 
because after measuring, uh, Bob will receive either zero with some probability and one with some probability. But if we can clone this qubit and we can create uh, billions and trillions of copies of this qubit, so we have now not single copy but but lots and lots of uh, identical copies of this qubit, then by measuring this qubit repeatedly, we can also retrieve the information stored in this qubit. Not only 0 and 1, but the values of alpha and beta. I hope you will be able to understand these proofs. If you have any questions, then you can ask those questions from me. Uh, that's it for this lecture. See you next time.